Hello everyone, I'm finally back. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get a massive historical data set of tick level data. I'm going to show you how to get trade data for about seven years with Alpaca's API. And this you can do for free with the free tier even. You just might not be able to get the last date, but like Alpaca has basically the best uh, free data available. So I'll show you how to get that. So because the data is huge, we're going to basically... Um, uh, split seven years into say 84 monthly chunks and we're gonna get one month worth of tick data at a time if you're using Google Collab you should change to high RAM and this assumes you've watched my first video on the um, getting started with alpaca or I call it the ultimate alpaca markets trading tutorial so please watch that video here you'll get all the API keys and uh, secrets and all that getting started stuff so to get started let's go First thing we need to do is we need to, of course, install the Alpaca Pi SDK. So pip install Alpaca Pi. And uh, then, um, as I showed in the intro video, you need to get your um, API keys and secrets. And then you put it into like the Google Collab API key and secret. So now you can do from, uh, from google.collab import user data and then you do uh, let's say alpaca API key equals user data that get alpaca API key and uh, for alpaca secret key just because I called mine alpaca API secret I'll go like this so I now have my alpaca uh, API key in secret uh, and now we have to set up the historical uh, data client and to do that we we just do um, from alpaca dot data dot historical import stock historical data client uh, since we're going to need trades we're going to do stock uh, trades request uh, some of the time frame things are also useful um, this is wrong uh, but um, we're going to need stock trades request here okay so let me just show you an example on how to get uh, trade level data so I'll show it for uh, so so basically we, we first we, we set up the client so we do stock historical or stock client equals stock historical uh, data client of alpaca API key alpaca secret key and just to show you a warm up how it works we're gonna do stock client dot get trades and then we do uh, stock trades request and then you give it like a symbol or symbol lists so I do symbol symbol or symbols and I can give it a list so let's say I'll just do AMD Intel and then you give it like a start and end time so I can do start equals it could be a string or a, a time uh, stamp usually markets are closed on January 1st so let's just do fourth to fifth maybe that'll work and this usually gives you things in the format of like uh, a list of dictionaries and because if I try to display that it'll freeze my thing so let's just uh, instead uh, list of uh, dictionary uh, a dictionary of lists sorry with AMD and, and Intel but because this uh, will freeze if I write it they also have a method like dot DF which makes it a data frame so I'll save that into other data frame called DF uh, and then I stock client is not defined I guess I didn't press enter uh, get trades get that get stock trades and uh, client is spelled with an N. So let's see if this works. Uh, what did I do wrong? Uh, sorry guys. So now uh, eventually this will work. Uh, and um, this will show you just like one call. So the idea is uh, we want to get seven or so years worth of data for this. So instead of uh, just one call, we're going to um, basically do a lot of calls and each one we're gonna save to a parquet file. So this looks like this, by the way. It's like a data frame with a multi-index. So it has AMD and Intel. And you see, uh, very important, there's a thing called conditions. So like T and I and stuff. And that's very important if you wanna do like an ML model because uh, those conditions are very influential for um, if you can get that data at that point in time. So I, I have a few links and I'll share those links with you guys, but um, Interactive Brokers has a few things that talks about like these conditions. Uh, Alpaca themselves has a few things. So they talk about like here, like market uh, center official close, next day order, 
uh, average price trade. So you can't use some of those things if you're trying to do like a real time uh, stock prediction. You can only use things like normal things like um, like regular trades or uh, odd lots or something. Uh, you can't use everything, uh, so that's very important, uh, these conditions. So uh, just keep that in mind. So as you see that we got the data for a day. So big picture is we want a giant data set and we'll handle it later. So if you're using Google, I highly recommend uh, you use Google Drive to mount your drive. And then you save everything to Google Drive. So you do uh, drive.mount uh, content drive. And now to get the massive data set, what we're going to do is we're going to define the start time, the end time, and we're going to also define a chunk size. So we're going to let, let's say every 28 days is a new um, is a new file. I recommend using like seven days at a time at uh, least uh, because uh, then you make sure you're going to have data. If you use three days, sometimes there's like three day weekends, four day weekends, you might miss, uh, you might get empty files. So maybe use at least seven days at a time to get um, a non-empty file. So first thing is let's define the time zone. So Eastern equals zone info US Eastern. The results will always be returned in UTC, but if you're trying to think in terms of Eastern for getting the data, uh, I recommend maybe doing that because then you don't miss little points. So uh, you can define a start date, an end date uh, with the daytime strings. So you know, let's just do a year of data for simplicity. So I'll do from 2023 to 2024. Chunk size, let's do, you know, let's do seven days for this um, example because um, 30 days might be too long. And then let's put an output directory. So let's just say output, oops, output dear equals, uh, and as you see, this is like the Google Drive thing. So I can call it stock data. I can also call it stock data, let's say stock data YouTube. Uh, so I'll know it's from the YouTube video and then I could do OS that make directory output directory and it and, and basically this will make it Create a new directory if it doesn't exist. So what we're gonna have to do now is we're gonna have to iterate From start to end and go chunk size at a time So we're gonna have and each file we're gonna save to parquet uh, each data frame because parquet is the best because you can read from Parquet, it has your data types uh, ready. It's much faster uh, um, uh, reads and, and writes and applications and that sort of thing. So let's show the example. So um, so we're gonna basically run this code here, uh, one chunk at a time. So I'm gonna do f like something like f uh, uh, while start less start date less than end date. And then I'm gonna go one chunk at a time. So I'm gonna do something like, um, first of all, let's define our symbol. Uh, let's use Intel because I think the, the volume isn't that great on Intel. So in, Intel is like this. And um, what you're basically gonna do is now you're gonna uh, do this thing one at a time. So um, we need, uh, um, what? oops, copy and paste didn't work. Uh, So basically, uh, I just want to show you kind of the idea. So the idea is uh, we are going to uh, write our symbol here, a symbol, and then we're going to have a start. Our start will be, let's say, um, I'll call it uh, start uh, chunk start. Start equals, let's say, uh, chunk end, and I'll, I'll get to why that's true. And then I'll do chunk end equals a start. Uh, because now I can do chunk start and then I can have a chunk end and chunk end can be uh, chunk start plus chunk size and then uh, but what if you go over so I'll do end date so I'll do min of these two Okay, and then it, I'll print downloading chunk from the start to the end. So basically, uh, the first iteration, we start at the uh, start date. Uh, and since we set uh, chunk end to chunk start, we start at the start date. And then we, we go uh, th 28 days later, I guess seven days in this case. But if uh, it goes after end date, 
uh, that's why we cut it off. We do the min with end date. And then we just write uh, chunk start here. Oops, chunk start. And then here we write chunk end. And uh, each thing we save to a data frame, we, we have a data frame. And then we, we write a file name. That's the output directory we just created. And then we'll call it stock trades uh, chunk start date to a, a, a chunk end date dot parquet save to parquet and then we write save to file name. So let's see if this works. Uh, oh, but we also have to always increment the um, chunk start. So now chunk start here. Uh, so so you know what uh, we don't need we, we don't need uh, this chunk end. I just confused you guys. Let's write chunk start start equals start and then start date and then let's let's write uh just chunk end equals this but then later on we're going to update chunk start here to be chunk end and now let's see if this works um so first it's downloading chunk for the first week and then it should be downloading chunk for the second week and it's gonna save this in our Google Drive, and you'll see your Google Drive when you go to the folders. I called it uh, Stock Data YouTube, so uh, Stock Data YouTube, and you'll see uh, once it, it downloads a chunk, you'll see these things in the um, Stock uh, Data YouTube. Okay, so I finished one file, should be here. So now you can uh, view it in Google Drive anywhere. So now it's gonna we're gonna get like uh, many uh, files of this. I guess I'll stop to uh, two files because I have uh, I have to go in two minutes literally. So, uh, anyways, I'm back. I'll try to make more videos. Uh, I couldn't make videos for a while. Uh, I had a lot of things going on. So, as you see, the second chunk is working. And once you have it, and let's just stop. Uh, you you get 30 days worth of data. Uh, you iterate, um, and now you have the two chunks. And then to read it, you can do df equals. Uh, pd.read parquet and then you read for parquet uh, you need pandas pandas as pd anyways uh, that's kind of a cool way to get free data and I think you can get like eight or so years worth of data and um, and we have one chunk one week at a time you and then you can do your crazy data analysis with massive massive data Anyways, hope you guys learned something and enjoyed. Uh, please like and subscribe if you're new. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.